During the long reign of the dinosaurs in the Mesozoic era, these animals conquered the globe. As a result, their remains can be found across almost the entire planet today, proof of the incredible success that these remarkable creatures achieved. One of the most interesting locations where you can find dinosaur fossils in the modern world is Australia, a place that preserves in its rocks a fascinating and unique insight into the prehistoric realm of a time long ago. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the amazing dinosaur species that were discovered in Australia, and I've tried to include a wide range of different dinosaur groups that all contribute in their own intriguing way to this picture of an ancient time. The first of these animals we're going to discuss is a kind of theropod dinosaur called Australovenator wintonensis. The original fossils of this species were discovered in 2006 during an expedition to a site in Queensland, before being named and described a few years later in 2009. The remains of this creature were relatively very complete as far as Australian theropods go, with the left lower jaw, several teeth, ribs, hip bones, and parts of the arms, hands, legs, and feet all being recovered. Additionally, even more bones belonging to Australovenator were found after the original skeleton was described, and today we have more parts of the arms, legs, and lower jaw. So just what exactly was this organism? This has been a bit of a contentious topic ever since the dinosaur's discovery, with several different classifications having been proposed. When Australovenator was first described, the paleontologists working on it determined that it was a type of allosauroid, but beyond this were unsure as to where exactly it fit within the family tree. Not long after Australovenator was announced, a paper was published that established a new grouping of theropod dinosaurs known as the Neovenatorids, within which another grouping was created, the Megaraptorans. Australovenator was found to be a member of Megaraptora, along with several other species, and so some clarity on what exactly this animal was, was reached. However, the relationships of the whole of Megaraptora have actually also been brought into question, with other studies finding them to be a radiation of Tyrannosauroids, and yet another study finding them to either be Allosauroids as originally proposed, or somewhere amongst basal Silurosaurs. So, it's not quite clear what Australovenator really was, but from the material that is known to science, we can still determine a lot about this animal's lifestyle. This species was between 5 and 6 metres in length, and would have been a formidable predator when alive. The lead author of the paper that described it has referred to the dinosaur as the cheetah of its time, and although the jaws of Australovenator were relatively gracile, with quite small teeth, its deadly arms were likely its primary method of dealing with prey. Since the arms and hands of this dinosaur are pretty well preserved, it has enabled researchers to gain a good understanding of their range of movement, and therefore the possible uses the animal had for them. A 2015 study created digital models of the fossils from CT scans, looking at the bones and how they could have been utilised by the organism in life. The study found that the forearms were capable of a particularly wide range of movement, and the fingers could hyperextend. Therefore, it was concluded that Australovenator dispatched its prey using its hands and feet, particularly employing the use of its first and second fingers. When Australovenator was discovered back in 2006, it was found in 95 million year old rocks that indicated that there was once an oxbow lake, or billabong as they are known in Australia, in this location. Interestingly, the bones of this theropod were actually interspersed amongst the remains of another very different kind of dinosaur which would also be named and described in the same paper as Australovenator. This was Diamantinosaurus. Classified as a titanosaurian sauropod, the first fossils of the species that were found were comprised of fore and hind limbs, ribs, and hip bones. New material has since been uncovered, coming from a smaller individual that preserved various vertebrae, more ribs, a scapula, and, remarkably, fragments of the skull, including an almost fully intact brain case. So what would this animal have been like? Well, for a titanosaur, Diamantinosaurus was on the smaller side, reaching lengths of between 15 and 16 metres. And as it was a titanosaur, it possibly possessed bony osteoderms embedded in the skin when alive, like some of its relatives did. However, currently there is no direct evidence of osteoderms in this dinosaur. The history of the classification of this animal is not quite as dramatic as Australovenator. However, Diamantinosaurus has still been positioned at various points within titanosaurs by different studies. Originally, it was said to be a Lithostrotian titanosaur, the group known for possessing osteoderms, but later analyses of its relationships have also placed this sauropod as a Saltosaurid titanosaur and as a non-Lithostrotian titanosaur. 
As I mentioned, Diamantinosaurus shared its habitat with Australovenator, and based on the sedimentary rocks it was unearthed from, it seems the area where this sauropod died during the late Cretaceous was a temperate to subtropical river floodplain. Fortunately for us, the perfect environment for fossilization. Next up, we come to a small Australian ankylosaur, Minmi paravertebra. When it was first discovered, this species was the only known member of Thyreophora, the group including ankylosaurs and stegosaurs, to be found in the southern hemisphere. More Thyreophorans have been found since then, but Minmi is still an important dinosaur with an interesting research history. The species was named and described in 1980, having been discovered in rocks dating back to the early Cretaceous, about 119 to 113 million years ago. The original material found was only a partial skeleton, but in 1989 another specimen that was referred to the Minmi genus was uncovered, and this fossil was much more complete. It preserved a skull, as well as a lot of the body armour and bony coverings over the neck, limbs and belly. It's therefore actually the second specimen that many of the reconstructions you see of Minmi are based on. However, a more recent and detailed analysis of the second specimen in 2015 discovered that the animal these remains belonged to was in fact not Minmi at all, but an entirely new genus, which they called Cumbarasaurus, making it the second ankylosaur known from Australia, although there are apparently other specimens which are currently unnamed. Minmi was, as I mentioned, a fairly small ankylosaur compared to its other relatives, at a length of about 3 metres. It has been speculated that this small size was due to the effects of insular dwarfism, as Queensland at the time it lived was actually a series of islands. However, there is not a lot of evidence to suggest that this is definitely the reason. One of the most distinctive features identified in this dinosaur, and one that even inspired a specific name of paravertebra, is the presence of bony rods that run along its spine, which were probably muscle attachment points. An interesting proposal for these rods were that they were attached to the armour plating on the back of the dinosaur, enabling the armour to be raised up in a threat display, but not enough evidence was found to properly support this hypothesis. Another idea for the rod's function is that they could support the muscles of the back, and since Minmi actually did not have that much armour compared to its relatives, as well as it having fairly long legs, it has been suggested that this dinosaur was a fast runner and used its speed to escape from predators, a very unusual tactic for an ankylosaur. Right, so originally this video was going to include another two species of dinosaur, but as is often the case, I've written more than I expected and run out of time, so there's actually going to be a second part to this video coming later, and instead of just another two species, I'll add in a bonus taxon for the next one to make up for it. Oh, also be sure to follow us on Instagram if you'd like, we're going to try and start actually posting there again, the link will be in the description. And happy birthday to the dinosaur guy on our Discord server, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope everyone else liked this video as well, and I hope you learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.